how wonderful it is to to walk with you lord to receive every good thing from your hand and have lord the opportunity to return just a portion for your glory lord just lord take what you've given and shared with us to, to magnify your glory everywhere in your precious name amen hey please be seated and let's continue in prayer truly lord it it is wonderful uh, uh, to know that uh, Man, when you came and walked among us uh, 2,000 years ago, you and you alone, Lord, had tremendous clarity on, on the magnitude of the brokenness, the magnitude of the need, the magnitude of the hunger that filled all of humanity, that filled every human heart. And as, and as Jeff has, has focused us, Lord, you, you looked out across the really the world and you cried out that, that the fields are white, and the harvest. Lord, every human heart hungers for you. Lord, and it is our desire that you would use us. Lord, you would use your church everywhere. Everyone who, who, names, to na who names your name to manifest the reality of your presence uh, in a hurting and broken and confused world. How wonderful, Lord, to, Lord, to have your example. <clears throat> Lord, you who had such great passion for the hurting and the, and the broken, uh, uh, the uh, demonized, Lord, those who were uh, caught up in, in the, uh, the religious institutions and the power politics of their day, Lord, you came and you sliced through all of that, offering yourself, offering an invitation to come and follow you, that, Lord, that you might fill our lives, that, uh, uh, that you might uh, use us, Lord, and thereby reach every human heart, and truly transform a desperately broken world. Uh, Lord, as, as we live in these, Lord, troubling times, and, and it's easy for us, Lord, we who kind of forget history. Uh, Lord, it seems so troubling, but Lord, that the, Lord, the truth is in that 2,000 years ago when you came, when, when, when Rome, uh, man, gripped the Mediterranean world with its iron fist, where where uh, plague and, and, and famine and uh, volcanoes and earthquakes, Lord, just wrecked, just devastation. Uh, Lord, uh, you came that, that you might fill your people to re reflect the fullness of your love and care in very concrete, practical ways, Lord, as we see uh, the needs all around us. Lord, we pray for Al. Uh, Lord, thank you for his... his Lord, his daughter, being with him this weekend, Lord, for Ed and his faithfulness. And, Lord, we just pray that you'll continue just to, Lord, to be with Al. Lord, that, uh, that you'll strengthen him and encourage him. Lord, that he can, uh, Lord, just get his strength back and, 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 and join us, Lord, and, can turn and continue to, uh, to serve you. Lord, for uh, uh, Chad's family member, Jennifer, uh, face young, 32 years old, facing a heart surgery, Lord, be, be with her. Lord, and I, I just, uh, Lord, I trust that she knows you, but even if she doesn't, Lord, that she would experience, Lord, that strange peace as you settle uh, into her lives. Lord, I pray that you would draw her to yourself, that uh, she would look to you, and of course, for uh, Daryl's uh, longtime friend, Jerry, um, Lord, uh, well, Lord, facing that, Lord, that uh, uh, that crossing, uh, Lord, I, I pray that you would be with him, be, be with his wife and uh, their family as they wait on you. Lord, it's, it's wonderful, wonderful to know your love and care, and we know that you hear us, for, you, for we pray the prayer you taught us to pray when you said, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. 
Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Hallelujah. Hey, open your Bibles to uh, Genesis chapter 11. The last time we're going through the Tower of Babel as we take a look at the, uh, at the five questions that uh, Jesus asks as he, de- as he disciples us. Uh, we come to the, uh, uh, the final question. Uh, do you believe me? Uh, and this is, the, uh, this is the money question. This is what the Lord uses to, to focus attention on who he is and who he calls us to be. It is, is this quality that unleashes nothing less than his power, the power of, of heaven and earth um, in, in, into the world. It's found in John 11. That's that, that, uh, that scene uh, where, where Jesus calls Lazarus from the tomb. Uh, Lazarus is sick. Uh, uh, family friends tell Jesus that Lazarus is, is sick and they want Jesus to, to come to attend to him, to, to heal him. And Jesus delays. And then he gets a report that Lazarus has died. And then we get this. The compassionate, caring Jesus says this, and it feels like a slap in the face. This is Jesus speaking. Lazarus has died, and for your sake, I am glad. (laughs) Jesus, where's your tender heart for the hurting and the broken? Lazarus has died. Mary and Martha are grieving him, and the whole family and, and circle of friends are grieving because it looks like death has once again won its ugly victory. Jesus says, I am glad that Lazarus has died, that I was not there. Why? So that you may believe. All right, and we've got to draw a hard line under that. So that you may believe. See, what what Jesus understands is that that connection, that that quality of relationship where we are connected to him and he fills us has the promise of changing everything. And he calls his disciples and he calls us to dial into that reality. And so here, here's the question. It comes from John uh, 25 and 26. Jesus says to Martha, as Martha and Mary are grieving, I am the resurrection and the life. Whoever believes in me, though he die, yet shall he live. And everyone who lives and believes in me shall never die. And he looks Martha right in the eye and he asks her, do you believe this? And I'm convinced that all of heaven is watching, waiting for Martha's response. How Martha responds, I'm absolutely convinced, will either trigger a miracle and Lazarus rises from the tomb or he he remains dead and the world remains in the grip of the power of death. He looks at Martha, do you believe me? Do you believe this? Do you believe me? So we have this this word believe, and it, and it operates on three levels, uh, and it's appropriate to use that word on all three levels. Don't want to diminish, you know, any aspect of it, but just just follow me, and and we'll and we'll walk through this together. the The first level of belief is to believe is to see Jesus clearly. You know, that's, and that deals with your understanding, you know, what's, what's in your head, right? Do you know who Jesus is? Do you know that he died for you and for the sins of the world? That, that first level of belief, and that word is very proper belief, properly used there. But there's another deeper application of the word, and that's to trust Jesus deeply. See, not only does belief engage our heads, 
And so you can write a statement of belief, ideas that you carry in your head that you know to be true. But also, do you trust Jesus deeply? And now that engages our emotion, right? Uh, that quality of, uh, man, I, 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 man, I do trust you like you, you know, you might trust a doctor who's about to operate on you, you know. I lay my life in your hands. Yes? Everyone recognize that gear shift from head to heart? Okay. And then there's a third level of belief, and that's to abide in Jesus completely. So that quality of belief engages our whole being. Head, heart, and body as the Holy Spirit indwells us and uses us to bring his glory into a hurting and broken world. Can you guys see all those three transitions there? Right? And we can and, and you can also understand how a person can stop at either one of those places. Yeah, I've got right ideas about Jesus. And stop there. Or yes, I trust Jesus. He died for my sins. And then stop there. But there's that deeper level, and that's to abide in him. Uh, Jesus, use me for your glory as we abide in him completely. Yes? Okay. All right. Do you believe me, Jesus asks. So let's, let's, let's kick around. The process real, real quick has been our pattern. Um, as Jesus, you know, calls us to be his hands and feet in a hurting, broken world, uh, first is, you know, he draws our attention to the need. Personal need, family need, need in the community, need in the world. Um, and those first four questions di- dial us in to that. Uh, as we see uh, the need, we, uh, we turn to the Lord uh, in the midst of the need because we recognize we don't have what it takes. We don't have the resources. We don't have the power. We don't know what to do. Third we receive direction from the Lord to meet the need. He wants to move us right, into the whatever the crisis is, whatever the concern is with his presence. And as we take a deep breath and we jump off that cliff because I don't know what's going to happen, that's where we abide He invites us to abide in him. Lord, I don't know what needs to happen. I don't know what you're going to do, but here I am. Use me. And let me tell you, if you've ever been there, right? I I mean, you're on the precipice of some overwhelming need, and you're right on the edge, and you're about to step off. Jesus is going to say, do you believe me? Don't step unless your answer is, yes, Lord, use me for your glory. Okay? So Jesus asks, do you believe me? So we come to Genesis 11, 1 through 9, just to be faithful to, um, to where we are for the fifth and final time, Genesis 11, 1 through 9. Now the whole earth had one language and the same words, and as people migrated from the east, they found a plain in the land of Shinar and settled there. And they said to one another, Come, let us make bricks and burn them thoroughly. And they had brick for stone and bitumen for mortar. Then they said, Come, let us build ourselves a city and a tower with its top in the heavens, and let us make a name for ourselves, lest we be dispersed over the face of the whole earth. And the Lord came down to see the city and the tower which the children of man had made, had built, And the Lord said, Behold, they are one people, they have all one language, and this is the only the beginning of what they will do, and nothing that they propose to do will not be impossible for them. Come, let us go down and confuse their language so that they may not understand one another's speech. So the Lord dispersed them from there over the face of all the earth, and they left off building the city. Therefore, its name was called Babel, because there the Lord confused the language of all the earth, and from there the Lord dispersed them over the face of all the of all the earth. As we looked at uh, this passage last week, as, as we looked at the, the, uh, uh, the confusion and the desperation, the, uh, uh, the concern that 
uh, the story conveys, you know, lest we be dispersed. They had this real, you know, I mean, I mean, they're anxious. They came up with this great idea, let us make bricks, and there's no belief in that story at all. There, there's no turning to the Lord in the midst of the need. There's no surrender to the Lord, asking, Lord, how would you use me to meet this need? They just come up with great ideas. Rest, everyone see that? <clears throat> so it begins, do you believe me? The Lord invites us to see the truth, to see him in uh, the midst of the truth. So last week, uh, we talked about the issues of Babel. Uh, uh, when, when we're in the midst of great need and we're cut off from the Lord and we don't look to the Lord, what happens? Uh, uh, we go to great ideas. You know, we, uh, we get filled with, quote, spiritual inspiration. We uh, depend on ourselves and we're driven by tremendous fear. And last week, September 11th, Bob had the million-dollar illustration, and I missed it, so I'm using it now right after the service. Bob comes up to me and says, Kyle, man, 9-11, great ideas, spiritual information, uh, spiritual inf inspiration, uh, self-reliance and fear as those Islamic terrorists drove those planes into the tower. Better, that's better than anything I said last week. Thank you, Bob. Day late, dollar short. But I used it, man. All right. Yeah, right? I mean, we see that all the time. We see that all the time, uh, the issues of Babel. As, as the Lord draws us to himself, he invites us to see the truth and what he wants to do in, in the midst of the brokenness and the confusion. And that moves us from, an atten uh, 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 from attention to the external to attention to the internal, from, from being you know, just gripped by whatever the disaster is, to take a deep breath, to draw near to him, and to seek to see, to seek to understand what it is that he wants to do. And that's an intentional act. Classic spirituality calls us contemplation. Contemplation, which means thinking long and hard in the presence of the Lord, that we might see the truth, what's really going on and what the Lord wants to do. So back in the story of Lazarus, we, we have this, this is great, yeah, it's great literature, man. Now when Mary came to see where Jesus was and saw him, she fell at his feet saying to him, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. Jesus waits for Lazarus to die, and then he goes from Galilee to Bethany to the home of Mary and Martha and Lazarus in the mix of this time of deep grief. When Jesus saw her weeping and the Jews who had come with her also weeping, he was deeply moved in his spirit and greatly troubled, and he said, Where have you laid him? They said to him, Lord, come and see. Jesus wept. Shortest verse in the Bible. Jesus wept. As we see Jesus' heart of compassion in the midst of deep pain in the community. So the Jews said, see how he loved him. But some of them said, could, he, could not he who opened the eyes of the blind man also have kept this man from dying? Do you see this connection? Lord, come and see. Jesus is saying, oh, I'm seeing very clearly. The desperate problem is no one else is seeing. Everyone else is blind. But I have, but I have come to open, to open the eyes of the blind. You see that? See, that's why Jesus delayed to reveal what's really going on. The invitation to see through the way things appear. When we're gripped by great need, 
Everything inside us says, oh, no, look at the need. Oh, no, oh, no, oh, no. All our attention is focused out there. Jesus invites us to take a deep breath. Slow down, cowboy. Come to me. Let's think about what's really going on together. That's what contemplation is. Yes? Okay. Invited to see the truth. Second, and that's with our heads. That's the first level of belief. Okay. The second level of belief is to trust. And that's the movement from self to Jesus. Once we begin to understand where Jesus is in the midst of the need, I, I begin to move from I need to do something and I need to do something right now to, <laughs> to the help me Jesus prayer. Lord, you need to do something and you need to do something right now. And so Jesus says to Martha, I am the resurrection and the life. Whoever believes in me, though he die, yet shall he live. And everyone who lives and believes in me shall never die. And there's the question, do you believe this? Now Martha responds, yes, Lord, I believe that in the last day the Lord will res- God will resurrect the other faithful dead. <laughs> Jesus is focused on a an immediate opportunity, isn't he? I mean, imagine being there. We all understand the reality of death. We've all had loved ones pass. And the, and the, and the apparent finality of death. Jesus is saying, ah, things are not as they appear. Do you trust me? Do you believe me? And it's that second level of belief which involves the heart where we move from a panic to peace. Okay, Lord. I do trust you. I don't know what you're going to do. I have a sense of what's going on. I can breathe. I do not need to be in a hurry. I don't, I don't need to grab hold of this and make something happen. The wonderful passage at the end of Isaiah 40, they who wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. Okay. So we're invited to trust. And then comes the invitation to abide. The next, John chapter 15. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, ask whatever you wish and it will be done for you. By this my Father is glorified that you bear much fruit and so prove to be my disciples. As the Father has loved me, so I have loved you. Abide in my love. Ask whatever you will. And at this moment, what Jesus is calling us to do is pray his will into the need that we see around us. Now remember, there there have been two prior movements of the Holy Spirit. Right? First, the the invitation to see the truth, to see what's going on, what's really going on, and what the Lord wants to do. Okay, I understand. The second invitation is the invitation to trust. Okay, this isn't about what I can do, Jesus, but it's about what you want to do. And that opens the door to prayer. What kind of prayer? Not what you want. The Lord has already processed processed that out, hasn't he? Lord, whatever you will have is what I will pray. And in the work of prayer, it's moving towards that increasing clarity of what the Lord will have. And that's why prayer is is often so, so hard. 
it's, it's wrestling to get to that reality of what the Lord would have and not stopping until you have confidence and clarity that what the Lord wants to do, He will do. And this quality of abiding, you see, ask whatever you will. Because the Lord has dialed us into what He intends. Is everyone tracking with me here? Okay. This is the work of prayer. And having praying God's will is being prepared to doing God's will with His power. Because as we pray God's will into the world, what we need to understand, and there's no bait and switch here, as we pray God's will, We pray with the full clarity that it's very, very likely that God wants to use us to engage the problem, to engage the need. Not with our confusion or weakness or no. With nothing less than His presence and His power. So ever since, you know, the last whatever, two, four, six years, yeah, I believe since 9-11, America has been, in the, has been in the season of disruption. The church has been in a season of disruption. And we see all around us all kinds of chaos and panic and confusion and power grabbing and endless amounts of of foolishness, as people are acting just like the people of Babel. We got to do something, and we got to do something right now. See, Jesus is wants to use us to slice into to to, to break into that quality of foolishness, and so invites us. He asks us, "Do you believe me?" And it's that first level. Do you see clearly what's going on and what I want to do? Do you trust me that I can do far more abundantly than all you can ask or think? And then will you abide in me that I might abide in you, that I might use you? to engage the foolishness that we see all around us. Okay. There's no easy answer here. Just like there's no way, easy answer for whatever want, might be going on inside you. No easy answer. No easy answer for what might be going on in your family. No easy answer. No easy answer for what's going on in our culture. No easy answer. That doesn't mean there's not an answer. All it means that the Lord has now gotten our attention. And he's calling us to understand, to trust, and to do with his presence and his power. And so Jesus asks, do you believe me? It's a serious question, Jesus asks. Ah, ah, Jesus, Lazarus is dead, and it's the same old thing. I don't care what you're saying. You were late. If you were here, my brother wouldn't be dead. No, I don't believe you. Lazarus stays in his tomb. But he looks right into her eyes and he says, do you believe me? That I am the resurrection of my life and the life and that through you I can do anything. Now that's a tough place to get to, gang. That's not an automatic place. Good news is, the Lord helps us get there. See, he begins by focusing our hearts on praise. When he asks us, who do you say that I am? 
And as we spend time with the Lord with, uh, with the scriptures open and, and, and we talk with the Lord and, re, and he reveals his wonder and his power and his glory and his wisdom and his compassion, he begins to turn us. Do you understand what I've done for you? As we think back over our life or over the past week and we recognize the hand of the Lord at work in very real practical situations where, you know, all would have been lost except for the Lord. And guess what? The Lord showed up. And, 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 and he gives us a heart of gratitude and we realize that, man, what the Lord did before, he will very likely do again. Are you listening to me? And he, and he coaches us to, to hear his voice, to hear his living presence. Amazingly, through a, through a book that's over 2,000 years old, but not leaving us 2,000 years ago, but allowing his word to speak into the everyday of today with incredible precision. Yes, are you listening to me? And then, do you love me? Feed my sheep. And that's the call to action. Do you love me? Step into the need. And he asks, do you believe me? Do you see me clearly? Jesus asks. Do you trust me deeply? And will you abide in me completely that I might manifest my glory through you? Will you bow your hearts and heads with me? Now, Lord, that's it's an amazing challenge, that Lord, that you hold out to us. But we recognize the truth of it, Lord, and, and we trust you in the midst of it. And you call us, Lord, to walk with you, to open our hearts to the fullness of your presence, that, that you might use us in the midst of the confusion all around us. Lord, we're in the room. We are all over the map in, in, in terms of you know, how long we've walked with you, our familiarity with you, but it is absolutely simply true that your desire is to use each one of us to, to raise us up, to equip us, to disciple us, to, sh to shape us, that we might be nothing less than your living presence in a hurting and broken world. Lord, open our hearts to you more and more completely. Lord, help, help us to see you, help us to, to trust you, and help us to abide in you for your glory. We ask it in your precious name. Amen. Let's stand together as we sing, Jerry. Glory, glory, glory. Somebody touch me. Glory, glory, glory. Somebody touch me. Glory, glory, glory. Somebody touch me. Must have been the hand of the Lord. While I was praying, somebody touched me. While I was praying, somebody touched me. While I was singing, somebody touched me. Must have been the hand of the Lord. Glory, glory, glory. Somebody touched me. Glory, glory, glory. Somebody touched me. Glory, glory, glory. Somebody touched me. Must have been the hand of the Lord. It was on a Sunday. Somebody touched me. It was on a Sunday. Somebody touched me. It was on a Sunday. Somebody touched me. Must have been the hand of the Lord. Must have been the hand of the Lord. 
Praise the Lord. So go from this place filled with his presence, filled with his power, and serve him for his glory, both now and forever. Amen. One, two, three, four. Glory, glory, glory.